Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website, mographplus.com, and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1,030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now, let's get started with this video tutorial. First, I'm gonna walk you through the lighting that I have in the scene and then we start developing a realistic skin material. For now, let's apply a simple V-Ray material to our head model. Let me close the material editor and change my viewport to a quad layout. Now let me just adjust all these views a bit so we can see our lights better in the scene. Also let's open the light lister so we can see the most important attributes of each light in the scene. Let me run the active shade also. Maybe we can close the history panel to save some space. Now, uh, turn off all the lights in the scene. The first and the most important light that we have is our main light that is coming from the right side in a fashion that's called split lighting in photography. It has a cool color and a multiplier set to 20. The next light is our fill light that is coming from the right side of the face. And if I turn off the main light and turn on the fill light, you can see how it contributes the scene. It has a multiplier of 0.7 and a warm color to balance the kind of cool color from our main light. Now we can turn on the main light to see what these two lights are doing together. Next we have this backlight which is positioned behind the head. And if I turn off the main and fill light uh, and turn on this light, you can see how it works. It has a multiplier of five and a white color and I specifically positioned it here so we can see the scattering effect better in the material that we're gonna be developing. Now let's turn on our main and our fill light as well and that is what we get from these three lights. <clears throat> and finally we have a dome light in the scene. Let me just turn off all the other lights and turn this one on. And this one is just an overall fill light and a way to get more rich reflections on the face of the character. Finally, we can turn on all the other lights and uh, this is our final lighting. We can go ahead and we stop the active shade here. Now, just to show you the map we are using for this uh, dome light, uh, select the dome light and open up the material editor and drag its texture to the active view. Click on view image and this is the map we are using which is a free HDRI from hdrlabs.com. You can find this one there. And as you can see its overall multiplier is set to 0.5. Um, now <clears throat> Let's close all these extra windows and start working on our skin material. First, we can delete these old materials, create a new skin material and apply it to the head model. The first thing to do is to apply the shallow, medium and deep scattering textures. So let's start with the shallow color and choose bitmap. You have this folder in your images folder called head. Uh, we have this diffuse texture, which is our main color texture. Let's use this one. 
Uh, if you remember when we we're talking about different scattering layers, I mentioned that the shallow scattering layer is generally more generic and less defined. So let's add some of this desaturated brown shallow color to the mix by decreasing this map contribution to 50% in the maps rollout. Perfect. Now, if we render the scene with just this map in the shallow scattering layer, render zero one would be the result. And we barely see any texture or any detail. And this is exactly what we want for this layer. Next, let's connect the same map or texture to the medium color texture. Uh, we already know that the medium scattering layer is the layer that should have the most detailed texture. So that's why I'm not going to do anything with this texture and leave it like it is. And if you render the scene now, the result would be render 02. And we have introduced a lot more detail compared to our previous render. Let me just make the medium layer go a bit deeper by increasing the medium radius to one centimeters and the result would be render zero three. Maybe it's a bit more, uh, it's too much translucent, but we can come back and adjust these parameters later on. For the deep scattering layer, as you remember, we need a defining saturated red color, but the texture should be less detailed compared to the medium scattering layer. First, let's create a duplicate of the diffuse.png texture. Let's open up a preview window for this texture. The first thing is to make it less detailed by maybe increasing the blur offset to something like, let's say, 0.05. I think that's maybe a bit too much. Let's try 0 0.03. That's good. Now let's close this preview window here. I want to make this map to have more saturated color. So let's add a color correction map to this texture. And increase its saturation to something close, maybe to 70. Let's say 67 but we still don't have that defining red color. So let's add a V-Ray color map. Change its color to a 161 for red, 18 for green, and 11 for blue. To combine this texture and this map, let's or this color here, let's add a composite map. We can define the texture as the first layer, add a second layer, and connect via a color node to this layer. Change its blending mode to multiply and its opacity to 85. Now let's connect this map to our deep texture and render 04 would be the result of the current network that we have. What I want to do uh, right now as I soon will be utilizing the diffuse layer and it will hide some of the scattering effect is to make the deep layer more prominent and uh, we'll be doing that first by decreasing shallow and uh, and medium amount to 0.2 and increasing deep amount to 1. Also, as it appears from render 04, the translucency is a bit too much. So let's decrease the radius amount uh, maybe four times for each layer and see what we get. So shallow radius 0.025. medium radius 0.25 and deep radius can be something like 0.75. 
we could have done the same thing simply by decreasing the scale while you up here to 0.25 and it would have been the same result which is render 0.5 So this render is our subsurface scattering layer in general. Next we can work on our diffuse layer. So let's use the same map from our shallow and medium scatter, which is diffuse.png and connect it to the diffuse texture input. And let's try a few diffuse amount and see which one gives the best result. The first one was done with diffuse amount of 0.2 then 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8. I think we can stick with 0.6 here. Even 0.4 I think can work, but 0.6 would be better. So let's set the diffuse amount to 0.6. For the primary and secondary reflection, let's use this map, which is reflection.jpg, and press open. First, we need to invert the map itself. As you can see, the white colors and the black colors are inverse to what we want. Now let's connect it to the secondary reflection texture as well, and the primary one. Also, let's select the map itself and change the filtering to some area to keep more detail in the image. Set the primary and uh, secondary reflection amount to 0.3. That this should be enough. Uh, primary reflection glassiness maybe 2.5, a bit blurrier compared to its default value, and reflection glassiness um, of the secondary layer can be 0.65, just a tad sharper uh, compared to the primary glassiness, obviously. And the result would be a render 0.6. We might need to adjust the reflection later on, or we can you know, take a few renders with different reflection amounts. But for now, let's continue on. The next thing would be to um, turn on scatter GI. And the result would be render 07. Now it's time to add some geometric detail using displacement snapping. So let's select the head model and add a viewer displacement modifier. Use displacement.png as the map. Change the mode to subdivision. Set the amount to 1.25 centimeters and shift to a negative 0.65. I've worked with this map and I know these values work just fine. Also, let's set the edge length to something like 1. And the result would be render 08. We get all these imperfections and details on the face, which is amazing. The next thing we are going to do is to make sure that places with hair, like the eyebrows here, wouldn't be that translucent. We are going to be doing that by controlling max SSS amount using a black and white map. Uh, where is white in the map, max SSS amount would be 1, and where it's darker, max SSS amount would be smaller. So let's use SSS amount.jpg. And the result would be render 0, 0.9 where, as you can see, the eyebrows are more defined compared to our previous render. I think this would be enough for this lesson. Let's go to our frame buffer and take a look at the final render. You can simply right click on these images and choose load your settings to load the render settings that was used for any of them. And as you can see, we have a pretty nice and detailed render. We definitely can work on it, improve upon uh, the textures, uh, you know, um, work uh, with the parameters and adjust them and see which one is gonna work even better. But 
for uh, this limited amount of time that we have, I think the result is pretty good. And I encourage you and invite you to go ahead and start, uh, you know, adjusting these parameters and see if you can come up with a better render than what we have right now, which I am sure you can. I have another render in which I increase the primary and secondary reflection amounts to 0.5 and in this one the face looks to be a bit more wet. And in the third render primary and reflection amounts was set to 0.85 and in this one our character is literally sweating. We also have our denoiser pass, uh, our subsurface scattering pass as well, and other passes that you can check them out. Let's just get back to the RGB pass. I'll be saving out these renders and let's apply some color corrections as well. Maybe we can play around with curves and add a bit more contrast. We can enable our color balance, maybe make the shadows a bit bluer, something like 0 0.08. And the highlights a bit warmer, maybe 0 0.04. This could be a nice image to save. Uh, for another image, we can maybe enable white balance and set the temperature to something like 3000, so a very cool sci-fi image. For another one, we can disable white balance, enable hue and saturation and uh, desaturate the image completely and save it out. Um, it's up to you really and you can achieve better results in Photoshop but you can do some great post work here too. So in this lesson we learned about Vary Skin Material. I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time guys.